What do you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Watch And welcome to the NECC Emergence Division East Finals. I am Nuclear Chase, Nuclear Nukem. Follow me on Twitter at Chase Nukem. And I am joined here by Thunder B. Thunder, how you doing today? Chase, fantastic here back for another championship match. I enjoyed thoroughly my stay here the last time I got to crown a champion in Rocket League, and we're back here for another one again in the Emergence, but we're switching coasts to the east this side, and I have no doubt it's going to be just as fiery. It is just like if anyone's played Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It is the final day, day three, and there's no going back. We don't have any time devices to take us back in time. We are here, and the time is now. Bryant University versus South Mount St. Mary's. Sorry, we're going to be getting into game here very soon, but Thunder, I got to know your predictions. Well, if you gotta, I guess I can dish that stuff out. I think here, 
looking at the season records, because I haven't been necessarily around the block for a lot of the regular season with these teams. I can go on raw data and not much else. I'm seeing eight and one for Bryant as the two seed and Mount St. Mary's at six and three in the regular season as the four seed. Not a one seed in sight in this championship match, which I think is exciting for a lot of people's storylines and to see some underdogs and dark horses push through in the bracket. It's truly amazing. I mean, we saw last week in the semifinals, uh, we saw Mount St. Mary's clutch the win against the number one seed, Oswego University. They won 3-2. And looking at that data alone, as the fourth seed beating the first seed, you're 100% right. We have the second seed versus the fourth seed. So I think Mount St. Mary's, while they've set the precedent that they're here as the underdog and they're here to win, you know, looking at the regular seed, regular season record, they went 6-3 and three in the regular season. And in week seven, they actually lost to Bryant University 1-3. Um, so looking at that data alone, I'm just wondering if they're going to bring the fiery passion that they brought last week to take back on Bryant, or if Bryant's going to set this down as a repeat of last week, their regular season record is eight and one, you know, they've only lost one match in their regular season, the quarterfinals, they swept Dartmouth and the semifinals, they swept hood college. Um, well, I don't want to say swept. They, they won against hood college three, two. So and now we're here. We are in the finals, and it's a shakeup all around. I feel like I'm on uneasy ground because anything could happen. It really could, and you know what? I think it will. I think I'm going to call the prediction that Mount St. Mary's, as the underdog, takes this match. I think it could go down to the stretch. We're talking game six, game seven, kind of territory between the two. But I've just got a gut feeling about this team and what they did against the number one seed in the previous match. And that's, that's what you got for me. I'm going on a little bit of a surprise pick here and we'll see whether it works out or not. I have no horse in the race either way. I'm just here to see fantastic rocket league. So if we get a game six or a game seven, that's a win in my books. 100%. I'm in the same boat as you in the sense that I'm just here to see great rocket league. That, that's what I want to see. Now I have casted Mount St. Mary's in the past and I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't forget about Dre, because Dre will come back and smack it around. But the week that I watched, actually, Hambone was subbing in for, I believe, Snuffles. So watching this week, we have the full roster for Mount St. Mary's playing. We have Snuffles, we have Admac, we have Dre. I'm excited to see what we have in action. And it looks like while Mount St. Mary's is going to get the kickoff initially, uh, they're fighting in the mid a lot, and Bryant is going to push back, trying to get an early goal. Trying to, and they're applying a, little, a good amount of pressure here. That's a nice pass into the mid. Nice shot as well, just a little bit wide. The follow-up, though, well-placed. Liam R34 drops it into the bottom right side, and we've got our opening goal of the series. Yeah, and great play from Liam R. When you're in this type of division, when you're in emergence, the key things that you want to look for is how well these players are able to play in the air and play adaptively, right? You have your rotations. You know what those rotations should look like. But if the ball, the ball doesn't play by rotations, right? The ball plays where the ball is, is going. And being able to play adaptively is everything. And Liam showing that he's going to play adaptively. Oh. Taking the second goal of the game off the backboard, taking it cross court like an MJ play in the 80s. Oh my goodness, Bryant on the back of Liam are making a statement to start this series out. Maybe they were listening in on my prediction to take <laughs> Mount St. Mary's in this one because they look like they mean business to start this series off. I'm waiting to see some flash of brilliance here from Man St. Mary's on the other side in the orange. We'll see if they can get things kicked off here as they try to break into the zone. Off to the side, Admac kicks that off the wall. No touch from Lawrence Chan, but still this is in the zone. Dre in the corner. Not a great challenge there. Snuffles is going to have to collect and try again. Liam R off the back wall. That was floating out in front. But RC Mac able to, or not able rather, to get to that one. Dives across the goal mouth. Maybe the first scoring opportunity coming shortly here. That's a shot on target. All three sitting on the goal line there for Bryant. Not <laughs> always the best strategy, but I mean, if you want to guarantee you get yourself a save, that's one way to do it. Yeah, and really, Mount St. Mary's is doing a great job of playing on the back foot here, watching where the ball's going, and intercepting when needed. We're seeing a, a lot of great defensive plays that I wish we would have seen in the first minute from this team, but Dre, like I said earlier, can't forget about him, man. He is there. He is clutching out those defensive saves. Snuffle looking to get something mid, and he is going to find a demo on RC Mac. 
Now along the sidewall, oh, what a fantastic bump there to stop the push from Admac. RC Mac tries to go back the other way and gets challenged at midfield. Dre on the sidewall, just barely over top of Liam. Continuing to push forward there for a moment, Mount St. Mary's, but it's already back in the other end. What a pass into the mid. Lawrence Chin with the shot. What a save, though, to stop that one out. And you weren't kidding. This defense is really starting to kick off here for Mount St. Mary's. Ooh, and they're look, looking like they're setting up something. That's one, that's the two. Is the third going to rotate? It doesn't look like it. Lawrence is going to be able to take it off of the back post, but it is going to get set back up mid. RC trying to set up something. Admac proving that he is the true Mac of, of the two. The life of a Mac, this is, and a couple of them, yeah, on the field today. That's kicked off the top corner. Oh, a dangerous touch, actually, it's going to be from Ad Mac. Moore being fired at the net, finally. Who else but Liam to close out that play and get the hack trick? We barely have half the game done here, and Liam's got three on the board. The capability of really playing the soft defense in these rotations when you know it's going to get berated off the backboard is what's going to define your defense because that's how you're getting these very simple team-based goals. Oh, the two-second help from the Mac attack himself. That's what we call those. Um, myself and Nell had have coined the term the two-second help. If you hit it off kickoff, that's what we call it here in the mid-best. That speed flip from Admac so precise, so well hit, completely caught their opponent on the kickoff off guard. And that's a weapon that Mount St. Mary's now have shown to the other team. So Bryant have got to know from Admac in particular that that's coming on the kickoff. They cannot get fooled by that one again. We'll see if it's a one and done here, or maybe if they can, if Mount St. Mary's in the orange can squeak out another one of those on a kickoff. But really, if they want to be taking kickoffs at this point, it's want to be because they're scoring goals, not the other team. That was a great save. Pinched off the crossbar to keep that one out. It's in the corner now. Snuffle's trying to take some time to collect boost, but too slow on the ball. Our Mac dives in, and that's a battle of the Max. Two of them on the ball there as the 50-50 goes out towards the corner. And at midfield, now it's Mount St. Mary's collecting. Uh, Snuffle's looking to make a pass to Dre, but I think it fell on deaf ears. Dre was trying to get back and get some boost as he was out in the midfield. So Liam's going to look to make a shot for Lawrence. Lawrence the hit that he wanted in the air and it's like I said earlier it's the aerial plays that are going to matter here in the emergence division and how comfortable you are with those touches getting it where you need to go because passing plays are everything here we're going to see Liam try to make a shot on mid Ooh. it is going to be a missed attempt on the defense Bryant going to secure their fourth fourth goal of the game and it's looking like game one is swaying in the favor of Bryant University Really like RC Max streaking in there and trying to get some harassment going on that last defender. I think it was enough to throw them off their game and open up that shooting lane for the attacker coming in. And this is a very strong opening game for Bryant. As you mentioned, about as strong as it gets. They've let one squeak through on a kickoff, but other than that, they've been pretty spotless. And to be honest, their defense, defense hasn't been tested all that often. It's been quiet on the other side, the orange side here. And Mount St. Mary's are going to have to make some changes in game number two because this one... I'm afraid to say, in, in the scale of how Rocket League usually goes, this game is pretty much done and dusted, and they've got to start looking in these last 30 seconds towards finding a goal for themselves to gain momentum heading into a more positive game number two. Admac looking for the sauce, going to the grocery and trying to find something. Snuffle's also looking for a goal himself. Both are going to fall on blind ear, uh, blind faces. Sorry, they're not going to make it in blind ears. That just doesn't make any sense. But they're, they're going to fall on blind faces. Not going to be able to make it in. Snuffles looking for a pinch mid. They're not going to find the touches that they need. And really what Mount St. Mary's needs to focus on here is setting up their goals. They're just going for these blank shots instead of positioning themselves to be ready um, in the midfield for the shots on goal. Yeah, it's very true. The follow-up efforts there were lacking. The positioning was just not tight enough. The spacing not tight enough from MSMU to pressure on the situations that they were creating for themselves. We only really saw it there at the ending stretch of the game. For the, for the majority of that game and the early stages of it, it was complete control from Bryant and very little in the way of shots. You can see in the shot total, just five on the side of MSMU in total and I think the, the vast majority of those came in the last minute of the game or so. So they need some offense spread out far more across the entirety of the game if they want to take a game and start to really make a statement in this series. 
100%. And I do want to clarify for those at home that have tuned in with us all season. We have traditionally gone with a best of five all season. However, this is finals, baby. We ain't running a best of five. This is a best of seven series. So while game one, every game counts, don't get me wrong. We talk about this very often in Rocket League where game one is really just feeling out your opponents. It's feeling out where you are currently with your teammates and finding those small chinks in the armor as well as the adjustments that you need to make yourselves. So MSMU, I see them coming back in this series. I, I've, I've seen these guys pop off before. And I'm telling you, when they pop off, the movement's going to come through and no one's going to get in their way. And the thing is, one team inevitably is going to have a slower start in this series. I don't think there are any illusions as to who that was after game number one. But that's just the start. And clearly they were getting warmed up into their normal form towards the end of that game. For me, the big question mark is, does that continue at the outset of game number two? Even that brief pause in between games can be a, a bit of a reset sometimes. And so I'm curious to see here, what does the opening of game number two look like? And it looks a heck of a lot like game number one. Wow, well, I believe that we're seeing a lot more of a comfortable aerial play from MSMU. We're just seeing calculated touches come out from Bryant and Bryant feeling very comfortable and tr trustworthy of their teammates when they are making these passes. Absolutely, it's really nice spacing and positioning, good trust of teammates, and a willingness to dive in on the play and go for those low percentage plays a little bit more. And that's something that you do see a lot of that hesitation at this level of play because the consistency for the players is not quite there yet. But if you can have a little bit of that bravery on the ball and trust your ability, it can really pay off, and it is paying off here for Bryant. Meanwhile, on the other side of the pitch, this is MSMU coming down the field trying to make an impact here into the mid. Liam Prowling snuffles, an opportunity to shoot, pops it into the mid. Where's the third? And again, just that slightest hesitation in positioning from Mount St. Mary's here. That might have been a pass that could have been capitalized upon had their rotation cycled faster. Yeah, and I completely agree with you, Thunder. It's, oh, Liam getting a second goal of the game. I believe we saw the first goal from Lawrence, but we're going to see the second goal come out from Liam, and that's his fifth of the series. You can't be caught on the rotations. you got to be ready to defend there. Dre just wasn't expecting it to go in, and you said it perfectly, Thunder. It comes down to positioning and rotation. Some, some points that I'd love to see from both teams, we're seeing a lot of double commits, and we're seeing a lot of ball chasing. They have to be set up and ready to set up those shots because we've seen MSMU set up the shots on goal for Bryant. However, no one has been there to capitalize on those setups. Look, in mid, we are going to see Snuffles capitalize on the setup, and he's going to sniff his way into the goal. As if on command. You mentioned <laughs> it, and it, it manifests itself in a goal here for Snuffles. I love the dive into the corner and that touch downward to bounce the ball, ball over the goaltender. That's the exact kind of play that I was talking about, where nine times out of ten, you will see a player hesitate because they don't trust themselves to hit a ball like that. But if they go for it in threes and they know they have their team to back them up, so often it can work out in their favor, and it does there. That's a fantastic play to cut the lead to just one for MSMU. And MSMU has to capitalize on this. Uh, you know, they're only down one goal. It's a game that can definitely come back. Three minutes in, the defense is looking a lot more solid in this game as we're going to see Snuffles actually get a massive demo on Lawrence. And we've seen this consistently throughout the series. Uh, both, you know, Liam scoring and MSMU getting these clutch demos, um, but they're not finding any value off of the demos themselves. Liam with the uh, upside down goal. Uh, very, very cheeky on his end. I was just going to say, you talked about things we're seeing consistently in this series, and yeah, that's definitely one of them at this point, is Liam absolutely burying shots from just about everywhere on the field, not least of which was that double tap in game number one, which is going to be on a lot of highlight reels if such things exist in this league. <laughs> definitely going to see that goal again, and I can't blame you for that. It was a, a pretty one for sure, and it's a lot of speed here being shown by Bryant in particular. They are outpacing MS MSMU on the field, and MSMU are just being caught, not being behind the ball because they're too busy trying to react. And they need to force some reactions out of Bryant going the other way. They've got to make them feel a little bit more uncomfortable. And Liam, meanwhile, 
doing Liam things and trying to make an aerial play heading into the zone there, but this is MSMU coming back the other way and starting to test the defense. Ooh, and Liam gonna return the favor on Snuffles and get a demo out. They are gonna see a pass on mid. Admat gonna set it to the other post and look for another pass. Snuffles looking to get in position. Ball is going to tread very cautiously across the top of the goalpost. They're not gonna find much. Dre looking to pop up a shot. Admac keeping it in the side of Bryant University and just trying to find what they can. We talked earlier, oh no, is anyone in goal? They are gonna be yeah. there, they are gonna be able to find it. Well, I would love to see MSMU start to spot the fact, oh, that's so beautiful there from Admac. The touch inside to cut past that second defender just beautiful here. Control off of the wall, Ooh. easy as you like. So nice, and I wanted to say, I need to see MSMU spot the fact that Bryant are stacking all three player line on defense in a lot of situations. And if you know how to position to strike on that play and go for follow-up shots when you bait two or even three defenders even into trying to make a save, you can produce a lot of offense and a lot of goals that way. So that's what I'm trying to see here is if MSMU are going to spot that and try to change their offense a little bit to affect, I think, what is the biggest weakness in Bryant's game so far this match. Yeah, I, I, I would like to see it. What I'm seeing a lot from MSMU, though, you said you talked about pace earlier, and, and we keep discussing it. I think it comes down to boost management. They're using a lot of their boost to get across the field rather than getting in the air and getting the defenses. I mean, look at Snuffles right now. He only has 12 boosts. Now he's at zero, and he has to back up to get more boosts. So the boost management from MSMU, if they're able to play more off of their uh, teammates' touches, uh -oh. may see some value as we are going to see it go downfield from Snuffles. And the boost management now coming out from Bryant University, they're not going to get there in time, and it is going to tie up this game 3-3 three, three with 50 seconds left on the clock. And Snuffles here really starting to pick things up. I think that you can see the team energy really starting to lift here for MSMU with each successive goal that goes in and from different members of the team. Uh, their, their confidence is growing. Nice save there as well from Snuffles to shut down that offensive push. But this is crunch time now. Really close as we are tied heading into the final 30 seconds of the game. And now, with the way MSMU have started to play, it's trickier to call who might take this, although that was a big opportunity. Shot accuracy there lacking a little bit. That could have been Bryant taking the game on that one. It very well could have. With only 20 seconds on the clock, I really feel as though the next point may be it. Not even going into overtime. Liam is going to find a demo on Admac, reversing the attack onto him. And it's going to be close. Eight seconds left on the clock. Admac's going up. RC's going to challenge. It is going to go to left post. They're going to try to bounce it off. Ball is in the air. Are they going to keep it alive? It's yes. going mid now. Ooh. That could very have been a close. very, very close goal for MSMU. And uh, we're in overtime. Next goal wins. Next goal wins. And boy, is this a pivotal situation for MSMU. You have a chance to seal a game with one good offensive opportunity and get yourself back in the series. But they're being tested early here. Liam R34. Diving in on that, not successful on it, but it's pushed back into the zone by RC Mack. Missed touch there, Ad Mac. Crucially whiffing on that one. We'll see if the defense can recover. Dre gets dunked in the corner. Snuffles now on the side wall, beaten, outpaced by Liam R34, who still keeps the pressure on. Another whiff, and that, that was like a broken record. Just the oh, no. same whiff two times in a row from Admac in the corner. And you can see the nerves on the field right now, in particular from the team in orange. And that's a big pinch downfield. Oh my goodness, off the crossbar. That was so close to ending this game. That was incredibly close. And it looks like Bryant, you know, favorable with the mailman because they are treating this post like the office. The post office itself, they are delivering the mail and not allowing MSMU to get out of this situation. And MSMU kind of doing it to themselves, missing these opportunistic plays to get it out of their post and play on Bryant's side. It's going to come down to this next point in the game. And it's really, as you said, going to come down to timing and positioning, whether or not they're going to play off. Dre securing the goal in game two, making it 4-3 in this series. Well, in this game, second game of the series. Second game of the series, and they clutch it out in the biggest way. That was a fantastic infield pass. 
connecting Andre, who I think was the only player in that game up until that point who was goalless. So they're sharing the wealth over here on MSMU to get themselves the win. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a series on our hands now. Oh yeah, it's the fire is coming back from both sides. It's a 1-1 series. And as we've seen in game two, MSMU picking up that pace that we're talking about, setting the standard and deciding, you know, we can make individual plays and we're doing very well at making those individual plays, but we have to trust our teammates. I, I think it, I, I'm going to revert back to what I said earlier and state that this game is going to come down to the two points you mentioned, positioning and timing, as well as their boost management and the pace that they're going to be able to play at. And that we saw that they were able to play at the pace of Bryant in that game. They picked it up in the end, but is it going to be consistent? Are they going to be able to hold the mental fortitude throughout the series to play like they have in the second game? And I think one thing that happened there, you could plainly see in game number two, is that Bryant, they started the way they finished in game number one. They wanted to keep right on rolling with what they were doing and continue winning in this series. And for the team that starts hot in a series and keeps that streak going, there, there will always be a moment where all of a sudden that illusion gets shattered a little bit, that you're just going to go perfect through the whole series. And you show a little bit of weakness and the other team starts to gain a little bit of ground. And that can go one of two ways. You shake it off and just go back to business as usual, or that can feed into your mind a little bit of, oh, we're not quite as good as maybe we thought we were starting this thing out. It just, it shakes you just a little bit to have your, your rhythm thrown off. And they had their rhythm thrown off in game number two. So the question now is how quickly can Bryant recover and get back to business as usual? Because we know they're capable of winning games in this series, but they need to get back into the form that we saw in game number one. Thunder, I love that you use the word rhythm because that's a that's a frequent word in my vocabulary when describing Rocket League. And you're 100% correct in the sense that you have to be ready for these tempo changes because they're going to come from either team. And if they're going to slow it down, you know, we, we saw uh, previously in, in, in the Navi or sorry Champions Division um, slowing lobs in those plays. You know, instead of going directly for the goal, lobbing it into the goal so that they're not ready for that change of pace. And Dre looking to be ready for his own change of pace as he's looking to set up something mid. Adnak looking to get it out of the post, going over top of Lawrence. And as I said earlier, it's going to come down to the aerial play. How comfortable these teams are in the air and these passing plays to each other. And I think we're spotting here that this match is turning into a lot more of a chess match. And this could be the opening gambit here as there was an attempt <laughs> there on net. Nice save, but it's scoreless for far longer than it has ever been. We had an opening goal inside the final 30 seconds to a minute at most in the first two games. And now it, there is a lot less room to breathe on either side of the field here as the teams try and jockey for position out of the middle of the field here. That's a good challenge from Lawrence Chan to push it downfield. Liam, you can 34, fishing for a double tap. Not this time, though. And that was close, but no cigar on the double tap this time. You can sense the pressure coming out from either side, too, as both are going to come up, try to defend uh, ba Bank from Snuffles. He's not going to find anything off of it, though. Going to put it back on the post. I, I, I really do want to say, though, you can sense the pressure coming out from these teams because we're seeing that third rotate. Instead of staying in the midfield and waiting, you know, like Snuffles is right now, Bryant has that third pushed up a lot and, and trying to create these shot, op shot opportunities, which worked for them very well in game one. However, we saw in game two, it snuck back on them. They, all of the goals that we saw from MSMU were mainly cross field because they didn't have a third in the back line waiting for that ball to come across. And the infield passing play that you saw in overtime from MSU, M MSMU was the biggest positive sign we've seen of how their offense has developed in this game. And meanwhile, equally on the other side, they're spotting those passing plays and cutting them off when Bryant have been attempting them more recently. And those two things combined really turned the tables of this series in a hurry. Oh, that's a good flick attempt there from Lawrence Chan, cut out by Dre. As we regain the action, rejoin the action in this game as it's about two minutes left in game number three. This will determine another lead in the series. That's rung off the crossbar, top corner. They find it again. They look for it again, and Liam R34 makes an unbelievable save to keep that follow-up shot out, and we're still scoreless. That pinch was so clutch. And with two minutes left, 
we're seeing a complete flip of the script. Instead of focusing on this hardcore offense, bang it off the back wall and just hope for hope for some plays, we're seeing a lot of defensive play come out from these teams. And I, they, they may be tuning into the cast hearing us. They're saving their boost and they're waiting for these opportunities in the midfield, in the infield, really, for these plays. A minute and 30 left on the clock. It's anyone's game. Well, let's see who decides to take it here. We may have a hero in regulation, or it may lead to another overtime in game number three of this championship. Speaking of heroes, Admac comes streaking in to beat the defenders out and slam home an aerial shot. And that's exactly what they needed. MSMU, we talked about momentum earlier, right? Both of these teams are coming off of the same momentum. Their quarterfinals wins were 3 0s, and their semifinals wins were 3 2s. However, Mount St. Mary's with the upsets, looking like they're trying to upset this series now, and they're bringing the momentum in game three. 1-0. If they're able to get a second goal, that may secure their spot as a 2-1 in the series. Pressure now firmly onto Bryant to get themselves a goal and tie this. They want to send it to at least an overtime if they can. And they want that overtime to go better than the first one did, but that is a brilliant heads up play by Snuffles to thread the needle on that right side and find them the insurance goal. Snuffles is doing a great job of reading the other team. And he wasn't sure if Lawrence was gonna be able to make it there in time. And unfortunately, I think Lawrence Chand had a little bit of a misplay on the flip and he wasn't able to get there in time. So it's gonna be 2-0. And I think MSMU is gonna take this game three. It certainly looks that way. We can't rule it out entirely, but they mm -hmm. are playing they are playing lights out Rocket League right now at just the right time too, to take a series lead. It'll be two to one if they can close this out. Close this out. It looks positive so far as they're streaking down towards the net yet again, trying to take on the old adage of a best defense, good offense, and just keep this ball hemmed in the Bryant zone for the remainder of the game. What a oh my goodness! The diving save across. Ooh. I thought that was a sure goal with Admac diving across that sidewall, and meanwhile it's coming Ooh. back the other way. Lawrence Chan from the middle of the field gives Bryant a chance. It is a thin, a narrow one, but it is a chance. Uh, <laughs> and there's a chance for a two second ope. I talked about it earlier, right? They could get it off the post. They could get it off the kickoff. We're gonna have to see how this kickoff works because this could be a major determiner of how the series is gonna go. Lawrence hitting it off the side post, looking for a shot. Snuffles is gonna be there though to reject it. Looking for a shot of his own, it is gonna go back up on MSMU side. Admac looking to touch this down and secure their game three. It looks like Bryant's gonna keep it alive though. Oh. Ah, that's gonna be it. The attempt on the back line, Valiant there trying to keep the ball up in their own zone and you always, always, have to try and commit, never give up on a play like that because uh, if anybody's watched Rocket League Esports, you know the game's not done just because the time has run out. But that was a brilliant effort here by MSMU. Honestly, the scoreline, I don't think tells the whole story of this game. That felt far more a dominating performance th th for them than just a one goal lead to me. Yeah, it, it very much feels as though they're getting into the rhythm. They're, they're feeling themselves as, uh, as a team. And sometimes that's what best of sevens are for. That's what these longer sets are for. It's to have the comfortability of sitting in your first game and saying, we're going to spend this first game and just read our opponents, right? We're going to see exactly what their behaviors are. We're going to see exactly who is double committing and where the chinks in the armor were. And it, it feels as though MSMU has done that on the external end and on the internal end for their team they're just feeling a lot more comfortable passing to each other and playing off of each other we're seeing the synergy from snuffles and admac even dre in the gold line making some amazing defensive plays in that second and first game i really feel as though it's shining through bryant can't run away with the bag yet you know it's now 2-1 in the series and they find themselves down are they going to be able to pop back and play to the level that msmu is demanding well, it's a big ask because they are they are under it now with the way MSMU is playing. And I really like, too, a little bit earlier that you touched on intel gathering and how it, they may not have started in the biggest way, but MSMU used the information that they got to build the game that they need going forward in the series. And intel gathering is not just an exclusive thing to other esports. It's, it's a big time thing in Rocket League as well. And you may not have an alarm bot or a GUI mine to gather intel for yourself. You, you just have your play on the field 
and your perception of what the other team is doing to try and work towards figuring out what the adaptation needs to be. And meanwhile, Lawrence Chan sunk one in the previous game, and they're going to get the scoring started here again for Brian. Yeah, as we're looking at the replay, it looks like he puts it right past Dre. Dre was a little slow to that pace we were talking about earlier. And Bryant is going to secure that first goal of the game. That could be massive for the rest of this game and really pivotal for the series. You know, we are in game four now. We, we've had three games in the series. Both teams have had the time to collect the intel we were talking about earlier. Wow, Dre coming in from downtown, clutching the defensive save. Lawrence was trying to get that second point on the board, but it's not going to find its way in. Not quite, although boy was that close as the save came at the very last possible second across the goal line and from the only player who had any car control left. There was a scrum on the goal line there and Dre came streaking across to save the day. But meanwhile, they're in trouble again here, our MSMU, with pressure coming from Bryant. Spits back down the other way, but Lawrence Chan presses, presses it into the corner. Goes for the follow-up. Tough read here, but Liam R34 knows they can make that one. They've made it before. And they're back to their scoring ways here with a fantastic second goal. Really, if I had to take all six of these players, and you had to ask, if you had to ask me who was most comfortable in the air, it's Liam. He's got the positioning. He's got the angle of his car that he wants for the goals he's looking for. He's putting it right past the defenders and being very strategic in where he's putting it. As we're seeing strategy from Admac and Dre. Dre looking to make a shot, but it is going to get off the goalpost. It wasn't the angle he was finding on the goal. And we are seeing a lot of this fumbling in front of the goal from both teams. They really need to be concise on these shots they're trying to make. Right there, we could have seen a shot from RC Mac. It was very close. It's just these angles that are really getting them in these last second pinches. I'll tell you what, though, they might not be always turning into goals, but for Bryant, oh boy, okay. This one is going to take watching the replay, I think, to fully break down, because if I'm not mistaken, Lawrence got bumped into this ball by Snuffles and just used their flip to seal the deal on the goal. That is one of the stranger goals you'll probably see in a championship match. Yeah, that's the that was almost a triple commit. They were all three there. There was, uh, you know, uh, it's unfortunate to watch because they were all three there. They just weren't reading it right, or maybe they were, uh, you know, a little miscommunication on who was taking it. But that is going to be the th third goal from Bryant. And Bryant, like I said at the beginning of this game, looking to pop back off as Snuffles, looking to stop the bleeding in this set trying to get a goal in this game three they're trying to set up on post snuffles gonna set something up for mid admac little premature on that push and dre trying to secure it in it is going to go off the post and they are going to want to look for a rotate back onto their side oh what a bump there coming across that side liam trying to catch that last defender out and open up some space for an attack not going to work out but still a 3-0 lead for here and Brian are looking pretty comfortable at the halfway mark of trying to take game number four and level this series at two to two. Oh, Lawrence goes completely the opposite way and actually fishes for a bump. Instead, had they stayed on the ball, I have half a mind to say they might have found a goal on that one, but none to do here for Brian on that particular push. Dre back the other way gets challenged away from the net and the chances are coming here and there, but they're fairly direct from MSMU at this point. And I think Bryant's defense is well and truly prepared for what I, whatever they've been throwing at them so far. I feel we saw MSMU. Oh, is that going to be a score? No, Dre's not going to find it on the back post. I feel like we saw MSMU really gather the information they needed for game two and, and game three. But now in game four, I feel as though Bryant just picked up the speed. They kicked it into another gear, and MSMU is struggling to keep up with the pace that Bryant is dishing out. Oh, so, no. Dre! Oh, it's not going to be enough. Barely hitting the side goalpost and, and not finding the shot that they wanted and really crucially needed with a minute and 20 left in this game. Oh, the passing connection was textbook, Rocket League, but the shot, not so much as it sails wide there on MSMU. It's a big opportunity to get at least one in this game. And now we're inside what will be the final minute of game number four. Still more pressure being poured on by Bryant. But we're headed downfield the other way. MSMU try to fight across that left side wall. A shot on target, RC Mack. A fantastic diving save to keep that one out of the goal. And they're already back the other way here. Our Bryant, Liam, 
streaks and gets a touch. It's got to be the lightest of touches on this one as they secure this goal and I think fool the defender who needed to make a save. Yeah, I, while MSMU has the adaptive plays and they're doing, you know, considerably well with those, Bryant is just another level and being comfortable passing with their players. We saw RC throw it mid and Liam just clutching it out. And that's been the consistent plays all series. Someone passes it to Liam. Liam is securing the bag every time. I feel like if MSMU is able to do the same and set up snuffles, they're going to find the same success. However, once again, the speed, the tempo, they're not matching it. Admac looking for something mid, 20 seconds left on the clock. They don't want to come out of this game without any shots because it's momentum. Once again, you can't go into that game five with no shots in game four. No, and not with a tied series, not least of which because of that. Liam looking for a ceiling shot to close that goal out. And we're now into zero second time, still a chance to score and they will do it. Liam's gonna add another one to the tally here and that really hurts for MSMU and it's very positive for Bryant as they needed to come back in this series after dropping game number three and they have found that and then some. Uh, and Liam, coming out clutch in this game. Uh, he was the score player for Bryant. While we did a lot of um, assist plays from RC and, and Lawrence, three goals from Liam. I mean, two from Lawrence Chan, but RC, three assists and, and coming out clutch. Lawrence had six shots and I think what we're going to see is MSMU playing on the back foot that entire game four. Now going into game five, they need to adaptively play like they were in game two. They need to look and assess how they're switching up rotations because we're seeing a lot of demos come out from MSMU onto Bryant. This whole series, more than Bryant on MSMU, and I think MSMU has it down par Who's on what position, right? Who's your first, who's your second, who's your third, and who's getting ready for those plays? That's how they're catching them. But Bryant, looking like they're switching it up a little bit in that game four and creating a bit of a conundrum for MSMU. Definitely, and I think what was lacking in game number four that we just saw there was the level of efficiency on offense that won game number three for MSMU. It was not necessarily that they won the game through just having constant pressure the entire time. It was that they were ruthlessly efficient with converting the chances that they were giving, given and spotting small openings like those dribble plays you saw that was threaded into the bottom right corner from Snuffles. Plays like that that are generating a goal out of nothing. And that stuff is crucial. It's not as flashy as what Brian are doing. I think Brian here takes the cake on the high flying acrobatic style of goals, but that <laughs> is not necessarily what you need to win a series. You just need to score the, the same amount or more goals. And it doesn't really matter what they look like. It, they all count for one at the end of the day. Uh, you're 100% correct. And Ad Mac, RC Mac, they're there. Wait. Ad Mac wasn't there. RC Mac was there. I got the Max mixed around. It's the Mac attack. He wasn't able to get it in time. That is going to be a quick 1 0, two second hope goal from Bryant. And I will say, of the games that Bryant have won in this series, two of them now have come when they really find that early opening goal and are able to just keep steamrolling from, from there. So MSMU, whatever they found in game number two to immediately turn the tide and come back the other way, they need to find it again. They cannot let the goal lead get any wider. Meanwhile, I think the goal needed to be a little bit wider there as it was dangerously close to being far down. But it's gonna ring off the ironwork and it's not gonna be there for MSMU quite yet. Meanwhile, they are headed downfield here in the hands of Dre on the sidewall, Admac continues to kick forward. RC Mac, very uncomfortable there. Follow-up shot, a bit weak though. Boost lacking for Admac. And I think the boost management issues that you pointed to for MSMU earlier in the series have come back to rear their ugly head a little bit again. It, it, it's something that cannot be forgettable or forgiven when you have someone as ruthless and a menace as Liam waiting on the sidelines for these shots on goal. Admac getting a demo on Liam, recognizing the threat that, that he could be for this series, trying to take him out as they're looking to push an advantage. However, Bryant pushing an advantage of their own, and we are going to see a bit of a double commit come out from Lawrence and RC. Doesn't matter. They're pushing off the back post. Snuffles trying to get anything, and it's coming down really in the series to control. 
Oh. Oh, oh, bouncing it in. RC Mac said, "Oh, you're you're the low hanging fruit is right there. We're gonna take it." And that ball is sitting tantalizingly on the goal line for so long, and it's that you know if you've played Rocket <laughs> League that feeling of just being stuck in molasses when the ball does something unexpected and you have no momentum. If you're stopped on the field and the ball is next to you, you just kind of have to sit and stare at it. And as terrorizing as that can be when it's sitting on the goal line, there's not a whole lot you can do. And it just took one dive in there from Bryant to secure that goal. And it is 2-0 now here. This spells trouble for MSMU. And we're approaching the halfway mark of the game already where this could be a match point situation for Bryant if they continue to play lights out like they are. Uh, and MSMU, they've just got to pull out their protractors at this point, man. They've got to really refine these shots and the touches they're looking in the air because that's what's killing them. They're so close on most of these goals. They're just not able, like I said earlier, to secure the bag. Dre looking to make a pass mid for Snuffles, and Snuffles gonna find the opportunity, get the angle that he needs, and smack it in the goal, getting their first shot on the goal in two games, in this game and last game. And the calculated fake question mark, major question mark on that one. I think they were looking for contact on the ball, but the lack calculated. thereof. The lack thereof really proved to be effective here. And that is a we take those moment for MSMU as they still mount even more offense here. And Snuffles oh. is going to find another one. And in the blink of an eye, this game is tied. It's all about active playing. We talk about it often in my program, but there's passive playing and there's active playing. Passive playing is you're not in the moment. You're just setting up shots. You know the strategy and you're going for it. Active playing is having every ounce of your focused attention in the moment and ready to go. And Snuffles is proving he's here actively playing and wants this bad. Dre wanted that pass into the mid to find its way in. Oh, that... Ooh. Nice little cheeky touch from Lawrence Chan. Not going to work out, though, as the streaking defender barely got a piece of it on the retreat. Liam now beaten out to it by Admac, but Lawrence is there to defend only for a moment, though, as Snuffles rocking and rolling like they were in previous games in the series and leading the offense for MSMU. Snuffles looking like he had about to go ruffles beforehand because he is energized, ready to go, scoring all three goals for MSMU in this series and coming in clutch for his team. Big times. It's just snuffles with a bag of ruffles and Spotify on shuffles. That's what I say, and they're definitely feeling it. Whatever the recipe is, it's a recipe for success, and I'm sure that it's energizing the team as a whole for MSMU as well. You're very liable to see the other players start to play better as well when you have a player leading the charge like that. And speaking of which, Admac is going to try to poke one into the offensive zone here. But here comes trouble for Bryant. Liam in the corner trying to get a piece of it. Lawrence Chan keeps it in the zone. Admac trying to clear. RC Mac now into the corner. Bit of a weak touch from Admac. This could be dangerous, but a nice follow-up and a great bit of control. Good boost efficiency too. Admac had nothing that entire time, but still managed to keep the ball out of harm's way. And it's looking like Bryant now finding themselves on the back foot and looking for scrapes here as there's one minute left on the clock. Trying to set up something mid. It's going to go back to post. Snuffles once again trying to set up something and it's just going to go back to post. This back and forth play is is uh, quintessential from Bryant and making sure that their defense is as tight as their offense has been. Final 35 seconds thereabouts here for both teams. One team just trying to secure what they've built for themselves in MSMU. That's not going to be a great start to that campaign, though, as the big time whiff and a dangerous touch comes through here. Pinch save off the crossbar from Admac, and they might get a counterattack goal the other way if Snuffles can regain control. Snuffles Pinch shot. Oh, oh near side. Shuffle! He's got the movement. I'm telling you, he's going to the grocery store. The sauce is in the bag. And MSMU looking to close this thing out. Five seconds left now as they're in the right side of the pitch to do that. Ball pinches out, though. Still dangerous. Can Liam get to it? Pops it towards net. RC Mac on target. And at zero seconds, Bryant tied the game, and we're going to overtime. Oh, I, I wish 
the folks at home could have seen the pog champ face i just made i was not expecting that but bryant exceeding all expectations that's why they're the number two seed baby that's why they're in this division and they're here to prove it the two second oh almost finding its mark barely missing the mark on the kickoff goal in overtime of game five I can't think of a more devastating ending to Bryant's game than if they had gotten scored with a kickoff goal to lead off in overtime. I think they're thanking their lucky stars. It wasn't that. Snuffles challenging against two defenders there on net. Admac has that ball dunked towards the side of the wall. And here is the star of MSNU for this game. Snuffles kicking it back into the zone. Dre missing in the corner. And Lawrence Chan's going to regain possession here and flick to RC Mack in the mid. Cut off there by Admac. Another great challenge, but a double commit as the resources being poured on a little bit too heavily here by MSMU. They've got to be careful of these plays because an overcommit in overtime means your game is going to be over. And that goes back to the control that we've been talking about, Thunder B. They have to make sure that the boost management is there and that they're precise with their hits because missing a shot like that could have been detrimental. Lawrence could have capitalized on the push there, but opting to wait, let his team reg regain their composure. And Bryant, now in goal, we're going to see the demo come out from Admac. The scoring opportunity from Dre, he's going to miss Admac back for the goal, and it's going to get popped out. What are we seeing, Thunder? Ah, uh, you got me. I have no idea how that ball didn't find its way into the net. Neither to MSMU, neither to Bryant, and neither to the folks at home either. We are still playing here in overtime after a minute and a half of pure insanity. It is Bryant and MSMU duking it out to try and grab the lead in this series. And if I'm not mistaken, we sit deadlocked in the series where this is going to give one or the other team match point. This overtime could not mean anything more. Uh-oh, Bryant really threatening here. The shot near target and saved away. My goodness, the defense is somehow standing up every time. Both teams now not opting for that back third, right? They have their first and their second right on goal and ready. As soon as they make that passing attempt, they know that it's probably going to get blocked or miss the mark and they're there ready for it. As, as we saw a, a very wide play from Snuffles trying to get a goal. Ball is going to find itself in mid. Liam pushing down but going to get demoed by Snuffles. Man, this MSMU team is rowdy. They are here to play and they are going for the demos. Admac looking for the movement, and Snuffles is going to capitalize. Fourth goal, they are going to be ahead in this series now. MSMU is coming back on target. I got some words for you. MSMU, infield pass, overtime, money. Every time they have been producing with that kind of a play and I'll tell you one thing, if this series goes down the stretch and goes to a game seven overtime, Bryant, you better watch for the infield pass because you're getting burned by it for some game winning goals here and it is sick from MSMU. And on MSMU side, we're, we're seeing that heavily, but we're also seeing these very lackadaisical clears in front of their goal. A lot of these shots could have been denied on Bryant's end if MSMU just got those far far clears. But the clears just keep going straight up and right back down in front of goal. And like we said earlier, if you have that low-hanging fruit there tantalizing them, Bryant's going to take the opportunity. They're going to go in and they're going to schmoove their way into the goal. So now going, you know, we're mid-set now. It is 3-2. Uh, we're seeing MSMU on their match point, and the stakes are high. The pressure is on. This isn't the first two games. You have to have those calculated plays. You got to have the protractors. You got to have the calculators. And you got to be ready for what's to come because if you're not, MSMU showing that they're actively here to win. Bryant strategizing and doing great off of their passing plays, but is it going to be enough? Well, MSMU, they're, they have half a mind to be dubbing themselves a giant slayer at this point. If they could take down consecutively the number one and number two seeds in this emergence east side, it would be a ridiculous run to close out the season for themselves. And they are but one win from securing that. This could be that game, or we could be headed to game sevens. And any way you slice it, this has been a fantastic series so far. And I think everybody out there is hoping either for an electric finish in this game or the next. I I, I think 
that is the best way to define the set is electrifying. The, the whole set has been electrifying. It's it's kept me on my tootsies the whole time. Snuffle looking for a shot. Liam is going to deny. Now in the mid, Snuffles did a lot of work in the previous game to secure MSMU the win. Into the mid, Dre diving on that one. Maybe a little bit too flippy floppy on the positioning on the ball there. We'll see if a direct approach pays dividends next time. Oh, that's a shot. Rings off the crossbar there from Lawrence Chan. So we don't see our opening goal as we have several times here from Bryant inside the first minute. We're staying scoreless so far, but I'm going to curse the heck out of that play. And Liam, our 34, the golden striker of this series has struck again. Uh, you know, it, MSMU may be gold and Bryant may be blue, but you're 100% correct, Thunder. Liam showing to be the golden child of Bryant and really securing these clutch plays when they need it in the most dire of needs. Admac looking for a shot, trying to get it off of the back post, not gonna find much. The ball's tantalizing in front of the goal and Snuffles is gonna capitalize. He's not gonna let that just sit there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me with this <laughs> Snuffles again. I guess we have to go with the benefit of the doubt here and say that that fake was calculated on the ball. We'll <laughs> never know. That one will be left to the annals of history. But that's a goal. It's a goal for MSMU, and it's a tied game for them. And I think they're very grateful for that one because they have, they've been under it a lot early game from Bryant. Mm. Bryant has been the starting team in every game in this series to gain control at the early stages. So to get an equalizer here for MSMU that early has to mean a lot for their confidence in trying to close out this series. Confidence is huge and the mental playing into these teams is even more massive as you're now into the late stages of the set. You have to keep the mental up, comms have to be a constant, and the collaboration between the teams has to be there. Liam looking to create an opportunity in midfield. Lawrence taking the opportunity, gonna find it off the back post, but Snuffles gonna clear, send it back to Bryant's side. We saw Lawrence awkwardly trying to make that play in midfield earlier and Snuffles capitalized with the play. I feel as though the positioning is starting to deter on the side of Bryant. And if they get that positioning back online where it was in game one, they could take this series. That's absolutely true. The, the hot streaks that Bryant have had in this series were the strongest Rocket League we've seen from either team all series long. It was completely dominant and highlight real stuff across the board. But it's been too stingy for them to have performed consistently well in this series. So I think that's the big question mark is, do we see final form Bryant before this series ends? What a save from Admac to keep that shot out and to keep the hopes alive here for a championship in game number six for MSMU. Get ball out of goal. Dre said get ball in goal. Like I said, beginning of the set, we forgot about Dre. He's still here though. He's still popping shots, creating opportunities for his team and going over two of the defenders of Bryant to put their leg up 2-1 now with two minutes left in this game six. This is MSMU's series to take. If they lose this game, we will be going into a game seven opportunity. Well, the ball, both literally and figuratively resting firmly on the side here of Bryant as they need to make a play happen to get themselves an equalizer and hopefully then some if you're a Bryant fan. That's a shot on target here. Snuffles is going to save it away. RC Mac follow up, answered by Admac. Into the corner now, Lawrence Chan trying to get some control. Admac. Gets a piece of the ball over top. That's a nice touch from Lawrence Chan and having their boost stolen away too. And that boost efficiency, it worked for MSMU in the past and I think it's going to work for Bryant in the future. Ooh, Liam detrimentally close to getting a shot on goal. It barely missed its mark as both defenders of MSMU were there to defend. And now the ball is care careless carelessly in the post of MSMU. Liam trying to create another opportunity for his team. Ball's gonna come up and right back down, but Snuffles is gonna clear. RC Mac creating the opportunity. Lawrence Chan gonna miss that shot in the air, but Liam there to capitalize. It is 2-2 with a minute left in this game six. Okay, so that's taking the calculated fake situation to a whole other <laughs> level on that particular one. That was not one, not two, but three players who went sailing by the ball, each successively expecting the previous player to touch it. Nobody got a piece, 
and it just left the ball hanging there for Bryant to be able to convert. And that leaves us with a tied game, if only for a moment, as Snuffles tried to get that lead immediately back here. And MSMU, you can tell they are hungry to close this thing out in regulation and take game number six. But I gotta say here, Nuclear, we may be headed to an overtime that could decide potentially the series. We've got 45 seconds to play and we are deadlocked. Uh, when you see that many fakes, that's almost a no bueno at that point. That's what we call that. That's a no bueno. Get it out of here. Lawrence fighting himself with no boost and in enemy territory. Oh, Snuffles finds the corner shot to secure the series. Oh, wait, wait, not to secure the series, to, to secure goal three. I'm getting ahead of myself. This series has been nothing short of electrifying. Like we said earlier, they are going to get their third shot on the goal. And Bryant now finding themselves with 30 seconds left to really pull it together. You're looking straight at a pass of the season for Admac on that touch out of the corner to set that play up. They were, they were honestly looking for goal on that one. They didn't quite find it, but it did not matter. The quality of the touch so good that it gave MSMU the chance to convert on that. 10 seconds remain potentially in the season for Bryant. They've got to find a goal in a clutch situation. They might be able to send us to overtime. Off of the crossbar here, two seconds left. It's not on target. The ball drops and MSMU scoring in the final 30 seconds of the game have taken it and they've taken the championship. And my goodness, they proved my prediction right. I can't, I actually can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I am starstruck. Liam with the opportunity at the end, but it hits the crossbar. Unfortunately, it's not gonna clutch out. That earlier prediction that you had made to go into OT for this game six, and we're gonna see MSMU clutch it out for two. Uh, that, I mean, uh, that series was so, so much fun to watch and cast and just see the trading blows back and forth, the counter adaptations and adjustments that the teams were making. And MSMU, given how this series started, th that is such a standout performance for a team to change their game the way that they did and overcome a very strong opponent in Bryant yeah. and a higher seed, no less. This was a really an unbelievable performance from the, the Mount St. Mary's team and they have done extremely well to find themselves a championship here. I I couldn't agree more Thunder B and coming in clutch you know they took down like you said they took down the number two seed they took down the number one seed and they were here to play they wanted this bad and they were showing it and it goes to show the underdog story that can happen in these series it's all about how much you learn throughout the season and how much you're able to in implement. I said it at the beginning, my chips were all in for MSMU because I've seen shuffles, or sorry, snuffles with the shuffles. I've seen the sh movement from AdMac. And like I said, you can't forget about Dre. And I was getting this just in earlier from our producer. He was on the same page as us. We were all expecting a game seven. We all thought it would get to that point. Bryant showing dominance in the early stages of the, of the series and even in game uh, four having that 5-0 over msmu it almost looked like a bryant series but msmu were able to get the leg up in those very close games game one we saw bryant take it 4-1 but game two msmu popped back 4-3 Game three, MSMU took it 2-1. Bryant and game four coming out of nowhere with a 5-0. And then game six, MSMU clutches it out again, 3-2. So it was a fight to be had between these two teams. But we are going to see MSMU as your East Region Emergence Division champions for the NECC Rocket League 2021. And we're going to go ahead and throw it over to our... Um, to our panel to go into a post-game interview with the players. Once again, you can follow me on Twitter at Chase Newcomb. You can follow Thunder B on Twitter at Thunder B underscore RL, correct? That is correct, sir. Awesome. We're going to throw it over, and we've had a pleasure casting with you today. Stay tuned for the post-game interview.
What a way to finish out the Rocket League season right there. Let me tell you, Jacob, game five, tying it up with a ball in the air and in, on zero time. What a way. And then to turn around and have Bryant lose it in game five. Uh, and you were saying earlier that uh, after game number one, anybody who would have told you that, oh, yeah, M- M- uh, MS- S- MSUM was going to come back. I think I said that acronym wrong. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> too many letters. Too many letters. Too little sleep. If somebody had told us, oh, yeah, they're going to come back and take it 4 2, no one would have believed them. But that's exactly what they did. And, and, and that was a thriller. That, that was undoubtedly one of our best Rocket League championships of the six we had this semester. And, and kudos to MSMU, uh, you know, making big plays. I thought they did a great job making some adjustments. Um, and they really put Brian on their heels. And boy, Snuffles with some huge, huge goals, some timely goals for the mount to send them to an NECC title. Uh, yeah, at some point I'm like, man, does he, does he let anybody else on this team score? In, in, <laughs> he, he had them all in, well, in the very and, best and, way. And it was, and it was Liam for, for Bryant, right? I mean, it was like a one yeah. one offensive showdown, but that was, that was a great one. I mean, what a way uh, to cap off our, our Rocket League season. That was an absolute thriller. One for the ages. That is a fact. Uh, Mr. Producer, are we going to have interviews here or are we going to keep it going? He's working hard. He's working hard. We're going to get him in here. Uh, hey, we're going to talk quick. Oh. No, quick. No, before we go to them, we're going to do this. And then we got, oh, here they come. Mm. How about that? Then we got three Hearthstone championships coming up. Tap it off with our final Overwatch championship tonight. So just to give people a little preview of what's going on here tonight. Oh, uh, we weren't, uh, we weren't going to let people forget about that. That's a fact. We were not going to let people forget about that. Okay, uh, sorry, I saw somebody else jump in with video here, and I was I was wondering if, if what we were doing. So, uh, but yeah, no, uh, let's talk about Brian for a minute, because we're going to talk with Mount St. Mary's here, uh, because they're going to jump in with us, and we're going to get their entire view of it. But let's talk about Brian. They played really well. Great let's team. be honest. It wasn't like it was, you know, David and Goliath, and somebody got Absolutely stepped on. That, that was a great way back and forth. Um, and Brian That's came good. out swinging. No Brian doubt. came they, they out nominated. hard swinging. No doubt. They came out great. They, they won that first game convincing fashion. Um, and, and that's a really young program. So kudos to Bryant. First year, obviously, in the NECC. Uh, they did a great job, advanced to the finals. But today, it's about Mount St. Mary's as they get the win. Speaking of Mount St. Mary's, they've joined us here on the call. Uh, gentlemen, good, good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having uh, us. Oh, of course. Uh you know, I, I know everyone wants us to talk to Snuffles because he kind of led the way there, but we're going to save him for the end. Uh, but let, let's start with uh, with Admac and Dre. Uh, guys, uh, you were everywhere you needed to be to set Snuffles up for all the success that they had. Uh, going to, uh, into game two from game one, Brian came out swinging hard in game one. What was what was the calm between game one and game two for, for your team? Of course. So basically we chose to just speed up. We noticed that they were um, dictating boost, which means that they dictated the speed of play as well. So once we decided to speed up after game two, it really started to pull together and Snuffles was there to finish up everything that me and Dre uh, made for him. So it was really amazing. Yeah, no. And with playing fast, they're kind of like ended up being like sort of perfect flow with rotation. So Everyone was always filtering back whenever needed, and we always had like a man up on offense for the center for whenever whenever we would like actually cross it to Snuffles or whenever Snuffles would provide to us. So overall, just playing faster was definitely uh, one of the biggest factors as to why we became victorious in the game. Hey, no, we talk about. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jacob. No, no, no. Go ahead, Jim, because I got a question, sort of a uh, bigger picture. I'm sure yours is a little bit more. Eaten. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, we talk about big time scoring, but let's talk about some of your guys' defense. Some great saves uh, in the in the later in the later rounds. There. Uh, I mean, does it get does it get a little tense on some of those when the ball is just kind of sitting there, half over the line, half not over the line? Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's just a leap of faith. You know, you just double jump and hope that it doesn't go in the net, and that worked out for us a lot. So we're pretty yeah. grateful to the Rock League gods, I guess. <laughs> and, and then uh before jacob jumps in with his big picture snuffles i i said we were gonna i was gonna come to you last i mean i, I don't even know what else to talk about with you other than just to say like just just talk about how it felt every time the ball hit the back of the net oh man i mean obviously it felt pretty good but as a whole i i really couldn't have done any of this without my teammates i mean it only takes 
so much skill to put it in the back of the net, but if it's if I'm not getting dimed up my by teammates, the rotations aren't on point, uh, boost management isn't there, like obviously I'm not even going to stand a chance. So I really got to throw it back to my teammates on this one for putting in the work and just giving me all these opportunities to score. Uh, I love that attitude, love that concept, and congratulations to you. Guys, I just want to ask you about the run. I mean, obviously, you face a, a fifth-seeded Wu team in the first round. You get by them. Then you have to take off the top-seeded SUNY Oswego group in the semifinals, and then you knock off the second-seeded team from Bryant. I mean, that's about as good as it gets. You take off a five, number one, and then number two. Just talk about this run to the title format. Well, for me personally, um, <laughs> I just – I spent some time with my uh, teammates watching some uh, some of the VODs and like uh, previous streams that we had and when we played these teams. And we sort of just tried to come together as a group and figure out the mistakes that we were making as a whole. And then basically just playing a lot of comp, like working together as a team, getting the confidence up, knowing how each other rotate, and then basically trying to become more solid in every aspect of our game. It really helped us to elevate our play and uh, end up coming out on top. So it's a team effort. Great run, obviously. It's as good as you can do, and congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. Jacob, I, I believe they're waiting for you to hand them digitally something here. Yeah, I got this thing for you guys. It's going to head down there. It's a championship trophy. We'll get you the shirts. We'll get you the headsets. But today, our mm -hmm. final Rocket League championship, and arguably our most competitive Rocket League championship of the semester, Mount St. Mary's, your NECC champions. Gentlemen, huge congratulations. Great game, and a great job all year long. Great. Thank, Thank you, so, you so much. All right. As Jacob has stated, it's a full docket today. We finished up Rocket League. We're going to be going into Hearthstone. We're going to cap it off with an Overwatch final as well. I'm just waiting for my producer to tell me where I am kicking it to next. Or if he needs me to sit here and look pretty next to Jacob and talk with Jacob some more. Uh, I do feel really bad. Okay, it looks like we are going to. Uh, it looks like we are going to be stepping away for just a moment. Uh, I would like to apologize for Mount to Mount St. Mary's here really quick, screwing up their their acronym there. Uh, too many acronyms, and I sit in a conference where we have an SMSU. So, with that in my mind, trying to get MSMU out, I just couldn't do it, guys. That's my bad on that one. But we will cut it to a break here. We will be cutting the stream. Make sure you come back on the other side of the cut. We're going to have three Hearthstone championships, an Overwatch championship. It's going to be fun the whole way. Don't go anywhere.